our continuing journey of discovery of Islam in America has brought us to New Brunswick, New Jersey, to one of the halal restaurants here, alhamdulillah, which we find here in America. And we're with one of our sisters in Islam, Sister Cheryl Daisy. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Welcome to the program. As, you, as I've explained to you, uh, we are traveling around America, meeting our Muslim brothers and sisters. And for our viewers back in Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, maybe they're not really aware of the life of Muslims in America. So that's why we came to you here today. So please, just uh, give us a little background about yourself and tell the viewers how you became Muslim. Well, I was uh, born into a Catholic family, an mm -hmm. Irish Catholic family, and I went to Catholic school from first grade through college, mm -hmm. um, got married, mm -hmm. have uh, four children mm -hmm. uh, that have grown now, yes. and um, divorced, mm -hmm. and through my employment, mm -hmm. I met some Muslims. And where um, was that employment? Um, actually, it was in... Um, a company called Minolta, they sell copiers, printers, and fax machines. Yes. And I was working in New Jersey, and the Muslims I met were working in Westchester, New York. And yes. we met on a company trip. Uh -huh. And what I noticed over the years getting to know them is how respectful they were to my mother, um, how respectful that they were to me. Mm -hmm. um, the behavior of the men I found to be much better, you mm -hmm. know, than in but general. But before you met these Muslim gentlemen, did you have any ideas or preconceived notions about Islam? I thought that, you know, when they said that we believe in the same God, I thought they were crazy because I said, no, of course we don't believe in the same God. Um, I thought it was totally foreign type of religion mm -hmm. from what I believed in. I didn't realize that we have the same prophets and that much of the information that Catholics are taught uh -huh. is actually the same mm -hmm. um, as what Muslims are taught. So really I did, I didn't know much about them at all. and I. Honestly, the fighting that goes on all over the world, mm -hmm. um, I don't find myself to be a prejudiced person, but it gives you pause to say, well, there's Muslims fighting Christians all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, I was probably being a good Christian, a little bit more on the Christian side of the fence, not understanding the plight of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. And so how did, you, how did you start along the path of, of, of accepting Islam for yourself? Well, initially, um, the folks I met gave me quite a bit of literature, which mm -hmm. I read. And when I got to the part that Jesus wasn't God, that was it. You know, mm -hmm. I could believe everything else. Okay, now, when you say that was it, do you think before that point in your life, you had already had some, you were looking for something that was uh, in accordance to what you believed about no, Jesus? I believed very, very strongly, but I believed I was a Sunday school teacher. Yes. I was teaching hundreds of children right. um, about Catholicism. Uh -huh. That's why I think it's such a miracle that I converted to Islam. Uh -huh. um, people were arguing to get their children into my Sunday school class. Uh -huh. uh, so what they said was that, you know, the same God and the same message came down over and over and over again mm -hmm. to the different prophets. Yes. And they put Islam, Christianity, and Judaism sort of on a timeline for me mm -hmm. as the same, same God but different times and different prophets. Mm -hmm. And I started to look at it that way and I believed many of the same components like that Mary is the virgin mother you know, of mm -hmm. Jesus, right. but that Jesus is not God. Mm -hmm. So this is, was very hard to unbelieve that because uh -huh. I believed it my whole life. Mm -hmm. And what happened, I think, is truly a miracle. I, one night I couldn't sleep, and I had been given a book by a sheikh from the Bronx Masjid, um, who came from Syria, he was just visiting. And it's, the book was The Miracles of the Quran. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't sleep that night. I had that book for two years, never read it. Mm -hmm. And so I just picked up the book and I read it. And once I read it, I got this really frightened feeling. I said, oh my gosh, now I know it's the truth. Mm -hmm. I have no choice. And I knew the road would be so hard because mm -hmm. it's really not easy right. to change a religion. Right. Um, you have to consider your family, how they're going to take it. Mm -hmm. And it's very frightening. Right. So, so how, did you, how did your family take it? How did your children who you taught in the Sunday school, how did all the people who knew you as the Sunday school teacher, how did they take it when you accepted Islam? Well, a lot of them moved away from me. But my immediate family, my mother had a little bit of a hard time. Every time I tried to tell her, she would get up and walk away from the table. So she knew, but she was afraid to discuss it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about three years ago, three and a half years ago. And today, she's happy that she said, I'm glad you found a beautiful religion. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to convince her that she right. be Muslim yet. Um, my sisters and brothers, you know, took it differently. Some, some were a little bit better than others, but nobody gave me a hard time. And my children, who um, now are 20, 20, 20, 22, and 24, my boy's 15, 
they were really positive about it. Mm -hmm. uh, really open and interested um, to learn more. Mm -hmm. So I found that overall, the immediate family responded very positively. The people who didn't know me so well, not so positively. Right. Now talk about dawa to women. Can you tell me a bit about your activities as far as giving dawa to, to women about Islam? Well, I started a program at the Islamic Society of Central Jersey. It's mm -hmm. called Muslim by Choice mm -hmm. program. We have a website. Yes. And I started this program because as a convert mm -hmm. in the masjid, it's somewhat isolating. Mm -hmm. As loving and wonderful as the Muslims are, they're, they're a little bit protective too. Mm -hmm. So when you have no Muslim family, mm -hmm. your Muslim family has to be the system brothers in the masjid. Initially, yes. it's hard to be really accepted there. Mm -hmm. So I, want, I wanted to learn how to pray, I wanted to learn Arabic, and when I called the masjids, nobody responded to me. Mm -hmm. So I started this program so that we could offer, we have sisters Quranic Arabic classes for reading Quran, mm -hmm. we have an Akita class, mm -hmm. we have a sisters Halakha that meets, and mm -hmm. we work very closely actually with Y Islam, Y Islam does Dawah, so we do Dawah booths. Mm -hmm. And the best example is I think by attraction rather than promotion. Mm -hmm. When they see a good Muslim, yes and um, they see them behaving well. That's how I was initially attracted, somebody who behaves well and, and believes in God and prays mm -hmm. and is a good person, honest. Mm -hmm. um, they want to learn a little bit more. Yes, and so as in, in terms of people accepting Islam, do you find that there are a lot of women who are becoming Muslim these days, even in spite of the climate we're in and the negative media coverage? Uh, you find love, we had a 15-year-old girl, make her shahada. Um, she came to our sister's halakha. Her mom had made shahada eight months before. And uh, there was no pressure on her, but she heard something she really liked about the prophet, called for some follow-up questions, and, and she felt inspired. And at a time when we worry about our children in this country, when we worry about drinking, you worry about drugs, you worry about all of these things. Mm -hmm. Here's a 15-year-old you know, reading Islamic literature and saying, I want to be a Muslim, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So I do think that there are more people open to Islam, but the way that you approach them is very, very important. So you say that in spite of what's going on, uh, the negative image being portrayed by the media about Islam, many women are still accepting Islam. Yes, especially amongst the Hispanic community here. Uh -huh. And we're in New Brunswick, there's a high Hispanic population. Mm -hmm. The number of Hispanic Muslims is really climbing. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think happens sometimes too is folks hear the negativity. and. Mm -hmm they're smarter than that yeah. and they say that can't be right that can't be true what they're saying about um, Muslims can't be right and this makes them go and investigate mm -hmm. and when they do investigate or even sometimes they'll come and be combative they mm -hmm. wrote an article a very negative article about not wanting to see pictures of women in hijab uh -huh. um, on the newspaper so mm -hmm. you know we wrote back and we invited them to the open house we have open houses at the masjid mm -hmm. where we have somebody come and give a lecture about Islam very basic information mm -hmm. about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and, mm -hmm. and other um, activities going on at the masjid. And we, we give them dinner, we give literature and Qurans away to them. And those that come with an open mind, you stay much longer than they intended to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's all we can do is open the door mm -hmm. and show them kindness and hopefully they'll come back. So I think sometimes the media, you know, if you watch certain television stations here, like Fox News is you know, notorious for putting all of the negativity in mm -hmm. front of the people. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for them not to believe that because I used to believe very strongly that there's total freedom of speech here and everything you saw on television was the truth. Mm -hmm. And then when I met Muslims and I started watching Arabic television, mm -hmm. and then I started watching, I think it's BBC, mm -hmm. I started watching channels from other places in the world and I realized that they, they don't tell us the truth all the time. Mm -hmm. and. So in some ways, I'm not saying we're not responsible for finding out that truth, mm -hmm. but in some ways, uh, many Americans have a negative opinion of Muslims the same way many Muslims have a negative opinion of Americans. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a very conservative family mm -hmm. where things like virginity and family and morals and, and, and obeying God and going to church, mm -hmm. well, these things were instilled in my family. Yes. But many folks from overseas don't see that. They see only the girls with the short skirts and the misbehavior and, you know, the boys that are misbehaving. And so they kind of have their picture of us as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of communication. Right. And as a Muslim woman here in America, what are some of the issues you would say that someone, uh, a Muslim lady from outside of America wouldn't face? I mean, what are some of the issues facing Muslim women in America? Well, 
there's a few facing the converse in particular.